Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today we're going to play some favorites and go over my current personal picks for top 10 houseplants. These are the plants that are just standing out the most to me right now, and every time I'm walking around my home and I see them, I have to take an extra second to stop and appreciate them, and perhaps give them a little love tap just to check in on them and see how they're doing. This list is in no particular order today, I really just genuinely love all of these plants and want to share them with you guys today. So, this one right here, the first one, is Peperomia Incana, which is commonly referred to as the Felted Peperomia, I believe. And if you follow me here on YouTube or Instagram, you know that I am a lover of Peperomia and have been collecting them for a couple of years now. So spoiler alert, you're going to see a couple of Peperomias on this list today. But this is one that's really just lasted throughout time as one of my favorite Peperomias. There is so much to love about this Peperomia. It is completely encased in a layer of felt or fuzz that is just to die for. If I get close, I'm sure you can see that layer of fuzz that I'm talking about. And on top of that, it's just got this lovely blue, green, silver glaucus color to the plant. And it's just incredibly succulent and just very robust. So a really, really wonderful house plant. Very reliable. It's very, very drought tolerant and loves bright light. So it's a plant that I would say needs to go in or very close to a windowsill. And it really doesn't want to be overwatered. So the worst thing you could do is overwater this plant. It's very, very thick and very succulent. So um, it would rot if it was getting overwatered. And you can tell from that glaucous color and that felting to the plant that it can really hold on to a lot of water. So it really doesn't need to be watered that often, as well as withstand a good amount of sunlight. So it's really just telling the person who's taking care of it that it wants a lot of light and it wants a small amount of water. So a very, very easy plant to care for. And it's just so incredible. If you grow this plant in your home as well, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when I say why I love this plant so much. And I'm sure you also have to stop and feel this plant every time you're walking around because it's really just so incredible. And while we're on the topic of peperomias, let's just get the other ones out of the way. This one's a really incredible one. Our second pick for today, this is Peperomia quadrangularis. I think sometimes, I'm not sure if it's the same plant as Peperomia angulata or if that's an old or a newer name. I think they call it the beetle Peperomia, I guess because the leaves kind of look like beetles. I don't really know. This is a really fantastic Peperomia, of course, because it's on my top 10 list today. And it's, I would say, probably one of the more popular Peperomias at the moment. And it's very popular for good reason, because it's just such an incredible plant to grow. And why I love Peperomia so much, if you can probably tell, from hearing that this is also a peperomia, the peperomia incana that I just talked about before, do you see how different these are? Like everything about these plants is like complete polar opposites. The color, the stems, just everything about it. Yet they are so closely related. And on top of that, peperomias are all non-toxic or pet safe. So yeah, there's just really a lot to love about peperomias. This, similar to the peperomia incana, is very drought tolerant. I would say peperomias across the board are very drought tolerant. I'm sure there's a couple exceptions here and there. This is a plant that does not want to be overwatered. It would, it would certainly rot if it was overwatered. However, this plant's a little bit more green, a little bit more glossy, so I would probably refrain from putting this directly in a southern facing window if you're in the northern, northern hemisphere, as I believe these leaves would probably burn. I don't think you want that because this is a rather a slow growing peperomia, so I wouldn't want any burned foliage on this plant myself. So um, yeah, just be mindful not to uh, fry this plant and maybe um, your other peperomias that are a little bit more green and glossy because I do think that they would um, probably burn. One thing I do want to say about this plant in specific and is very kind of similar to some of my other trailing peperomias, they're a little susceptible to spider mites, which is a type of pest if you're unfamiliar, but the one thing about these compared to like say um, Maranta or prayer plant which have much thinner leaves is the the spider mites really don't seem to be a hindrance on this plant they just more so seem to be a nuisance they just seem to be there so it's something i just spray away when i notice them it doesn't seem to be a death sentence like i was saying with like a Maranta or a Calathea that's more of a, you know, you leave them be for a little too long and the leaves are toast. But this doesn't seem to be affected whatsoever by the spider mites. They just seem to be there. And it's a problem that I have with some of my other peperomias that are more on the trailing cascading side as well. So just something I wanted to point out. But something I just don't want you to necessarily be afraid of. Just something I want you to be aware of. And I do have one more peperomia I want to discuss today. This is a little less common, I would say, than the other two I talked about today. But equally as incredible. This is Peperomia elongata, and as the name suggests, 
these very elongated lancelet leaves that are just to die for. You can check out that veination that is just so wonderful. And side note, the thing I really love most about this plant is not necessarily, necessarily the leaves, but the petioles. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see, but these petioles have this really lovely red pattern to them. It's just kind of splotched and I'm obsessed. And it's a very, very small feature but it's incredible. So there's just, once again, a lot to love about this Peperomia. Very drought tolerant, I would say very equitable in care to the Peperomia quadrangularis where it does have these glossier, uh, greener leaves, so I wouldn't necessarily fry it in a windowsill, uh, but I do have this one growing on like the lower edge, the lower ledge of a western facing windowsill. So it's getting bright ambient light, but it's not really just getting hit by those harsh sun rays all day long. So one thing important, don't fry your Peperomias but make sure you give them enough light and just don't water them too often because they will rot. And some of these can be some precious cargo that you just wouldn't want to rot. If you're looking for some pet friendly plants, I would go for some Peperomia. Next up, I don't think we really have much more like categories to talk about today, but I am a really big fan of Hoya. You guys might know Hoya are commonly called wax plants or wax flowers sometimes because they're a porcelain flower because of the flowers that they produce. And I'm a huge collector of, of Hoya in my home, I've noticed from the excessive Hoyas that I've accumulated over the past couple years. But there's one type of Hoya in particular that has just really always stood out to me and I've also noticed that I have too many of them in my home and I've really been like, we're getting a little off topic, but I've been getting rid of a lot of plants lately. I've definitely lowered my collection by like nearly a hundred house plants. And I've been getting rid of the ones that I have duplicates of that I'm just like, eh, I can get rid of them. This particular Hoya, I think I have like six of them in my home, five or six of them, and I'm not willing to get rid of any of them. I just love them so much. And that's Hoya pubicalix, a very common Hoya, but it is just so lovely. You look at this plant and you tell me that you would get rid of it if you had it. It is just so incredible. This one I believe is a Hoya pubicalix splash. So it's a little bit more pronounced on the splashing of the leaves, but there are plenty of other types of Hoya pubicalix that are just equally as lovely, like the Royal Hawaiian Purple, which gets some lovely purple new growth as well as purple stems, and I believe purple flowers, hence the name Royal Hawaiian Purple. Um, the, the silver pink, or the pink silver, I don't know how it goes, but brighter, limer green leaves, limer, lime green leaves, just less splash, but the splash, you know, kind of takes the cake for me, but just such an incredible, reliable, easy to find, inexpensive, houseplant. So there's just so much love about Hoya pubicalix and I struggle. Every time I get them in at the shop and I see a new batch of them, I struggle not to bring one home. But I remember how many I have and how unwilling I am to get rid of them. So I just, I can't add any more to my collection. I'm just trying to save my surface space for other things. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, really easy going. You don't overwater your Hoyas. You don't want to go too far on underwatering them because they do have quite fine roots that are, they're fine, but they're thick enough that they would like dry up and not recover well if they were underwater too harshly. So just one thing to keep in mind while you really don't want to overwater your Hoya, you also really don't want to underwater them as well. But putting them in a nice chunky mixture really does seem to help as it gives those roots something to grab onto. So yeah, make sure you're growing your Hoya in bright enough light and don't be overwatering them. But if you don't have a Hoya pubicalix, you should try them out because they're, they're quite lovely. Okay, so next up um, is a plant that I am really obsessed with and it was a little too big at this point for me to take down. It's grabbed onto a bunch of things in this vicinity that it's growing in. So I've just taken a little cutting of it today to share with you guys. And this is Senecio macroglossus variegatus. And I guess I have a lot to say about this plant. This is wax ivy, variegated wax ivy. And where to begin? Okay, so this is a Senecio. And if you're familiar with Senecio, which I believe is kind of an outdated uh botany term at this point. It includes plants such as string of pearls, string of dolphins, pickle plant. There are plenty of senecio out there that are quite common. And this is an imposter. This looks just like English ivy. In fact, every time I'm just like showing people around my house when it's their first couple of times there or their new plant person and they have been my friend for a while and suddenly all my plants start to stand out to them, this one they always think is English ivy. And I'm always like, no, touch it and they touch the leaves and they're so super succulent and it blows their mind and it's just, it's so incredible. It's an incredibly fast grower. And what's the deal? Like, why do I want this imposter to English ivy? Why couldn't I just have English ivy in my home? Because it's a horrible house plant. It is one of the worst house plants I'm aware of that I won't even let sell at the store where I work because it is just, it looks too much light for what most of us have to offer indoors. And it's a pest magnet. Spider mites love it, scale love it, thrips love it. 
everything loves it. So instead, I recommend Wax Ivy, Senecio Macrogrossus Variegatus. And while it is a Senecio, it's a succulent, it really does prefer brighter light, it has been so much more tolerant when it comes to pests. So a plant I highly recommend, super easy to propagate. I'm just going to stick this stem into water and it will root up very quickly. It's a very easy plant to root, a very easy plant to grow. I started my plant from a plug. So it was basically just one little plant inside a pot and I have grown it out to be this beautiful, large hanging basket plant that it's like I said, grabbed onto everything it can in its vicinity. So a really incredible plant that I think the world is sleeping on. Wax ivy, variegated wax ivy. So make sure if you ever see a variegated wax ivy, give it a go and let me know what you think. Okay, so this next one, which I believe is our sixth plant for today, is Piper Ornatum. Sometimes people call it Piper Crocatum. I don't know. I gotta do more research and find out what is the up-to-date uh, taxonomy for this plant. But this is just an enigma of a plant. It is so gorgeous with that blue, um, blue, with that green and pink and this lovely wine red color that's hiding on the back side of the leaves. It's so incredible. This is actually very closely related to the Peperomias. I should have led on that um, these are in the same family. Piper and Peperomia are both in the Piperaceae family, which is the peppercorn family, which is rather interesting. So very closely related, although this one, different care, loves a lot more humidity, needs a lot of water, needs, needs a lot of water. In fact, I would probably, if I wanted to do this plant the best I could do, I would be growing it inside an enclosure, but I do have it growing in this um, pot here that has a saucer that has this kind of like silicone coating. I don't know how to word it, but it holds on the water. So it's not like a normal terracotta saucer. So this hold, this is by Berg's by the way, one of my favorite um, brands for pots, but this holds on, as you can see from it dripping, holds on to water so it doesn't just absorb the water. So I can let this plant stay sitting in a little saucer of water which does very, very well for this plant as it just loves to stay really moist. So it loves high humidity, likes a decent amount of um, bright indirect light. I do have this one growing very close to a grow light, which is just how I handle my more finicky plants. I like to give them more humidity and give them that supplemented grow light light. Um, and yeah, a really cool plant. You don't see it that often, unfortunately. I think um, it hasn't quite taken the market yet, but with all of these plants, just give it time. I'm sure it'll be out there, but such an incredible plant. Really, every time I look at it, I'm just like amazed that it's a real plant because those colors just, they don't add up. You know what I mean? It's really incredible. We're gonna move on and talk about, I have two philodendrons to talk about today. And one of my favorites is this ever so lovely, I'm sorry I'm being so careful with it because this thing loves to jump out of the pot. It's um, a philodendron myoi. And actually I'd love to point out that that is what is growing right here. I just didn't want to ruin my background and take it out of the, the macrame hanger today. But this is also a philodendron myoi right here. This is just a smaller one that I have that's more handheld appropriate. And this is just a really incredible philodendron. I have a thing for these philodendrons that have these fingers. So yeah, any philodendron, and you will see with the next one that I'm talking about today, that they just really stand out to me. And every time I see a new one, and it's a decent enough price, I have to give it a go. I probably should pot this up. As you can see, it's just trying to jump out of this pot on us. So I normally am not messing with it. I usually just leave it be and it just, it's, it's fine. But as soon as I start to mess with it, it really just wants to take a tumble. But a really excellent vining philodendron, as you can also see from the one behind me. Um, and it's very low maintenance. Philodendrons, for the most part, are very, very low maintenance. I found this one to be a very incredible grower. I've only been growing both of these for a year and a half. This one for about a year, this one for about a year and a half, and they're great. Highly, highly recommend. I just am obsessed with this leaf structure. It's just all about the leaves for me of these plants. Um, in terms of the care, um, very easy going. I practically water them like when I water them. Like they're very not temperamental plants. Very, very easy philodendrons. I'd say roughly I water them like maybe every 10 to 14 days, but um, they really don't seem to mind or get too wilty if I go too long. Of course, I'm probably not going incredibly long, without watering them. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is a very, very reliable philodendron or house plant. All right, let's see if we can get this back down without it jumping out of its pot. And there it goes. Okay, so <laughs> this next philodendron is philodendron padatum. And I believe that this has carried over from my last top 10 house plants list 
because this thing is freaking amazing. Just look at these leaves. It's just so lovely. I've been growing this one for a couple of years now, and I wish these leaves would get a little bigger and more mature, but you know what? It's only given me what I'm giving it, so I, I can't really ask for more. It's just, once again, such a reliable grower. You can see how it's grown up this whole uh, stick thingy that I have going on. It's been a couple of years, and it's given me nothing but joy. These leaves are just such an incredible shape. It's a little bit different than the philodendron myoi. Similar, but different. I'm a little bit more into these lobes. Like, I'm all about the fingers, but the lobes really get me. Like, I'm all about some lobes, some fingers and some lobes. Just putting that out there. I'm just, I'm just all about it. But, yeah, once again, really, really, really easy plant to grow. If I were to put these outside for the summer, I'm sure they would probably do a lot better with those conditions, um, given it would be more equatable to what they're probably used to in their natural habitat, which is a lot more humid, a little bit more wet in the summertime here, um, and not too bright, which my courtyard is very heavily shaded, which would be perfect for that. So where to go from here? Let's move on to this bad boy, which is a little difficult to get into frame, the way I have to hold it. Um, this is a Syngonium. So if you are familiar with Syngonium, which is commonly referred to as arrowhead vine, you're probably like, what? That's a Syngonium? And yes, it's a Syngonium. It's a Syngonium Chia Pence. And once again, that's kind of what I like about this plant. It's a little bit more of an imposter plant. It looks much more relatable to, I would say, a philodendron, which I think is really cool. And it's quite large. I've had this thing for, mm, I'd say, since the beginning of this year. And it has really grown quite a bit for me. I've been really considering getting this like a tall moss pole and really making it like a statement plant in my home because it's been so reliable. I would say this thing grows just as easy as a regular Syngonium, just as easy as a Philodendron, really, if you can grow any of those plants, you can grow this plant. And I really just don't see it on the market that often, although it's been popping up. I think my friends at the Potted Elephant sell this one pretty regularly. That's, just, that's not where I got this one, but I'm pretty sure that, that they have it. It's so wonderful, very easy. I'm just obsessed with these large leaves that just effortlessly grow and the way it just climbs with ease. Uh, it, it's just so fantastic. It's a plant that I'm like, I've only had this for not even an entire year, but I'm just like thrilled to see what this plant's gonna continue to do. And it's very vocal with me. The leaves just kind of curl in on the edge, similar to a Syndapsis pictus when it's in need of water. And I just give it a nice drink and it pops right back up. If I'm watering it too much or if I am neglecting it a little bit too much, the lower leaves will yellow and fall off, which is why it's a little bit bare down here as I was, you know, getting to know this plant at one point. But I think I have the care down pat at this point. And I'm just thrilled to see what this thing is going to do. So it's still on its plastic nursery pot. So I think it is about time I get this thing a nice four or five foot moss pole. We're going to go in deep with that and get a nice pot and really do something nice for this plant because it's really been doing some nice things for me. And last but not least, our number 10 pick for top 10 houseplants is the incredible Monstera Peru. This is my absolute favorite Monstera. It's just so incredible. I feel like I've been eyeing this thing up ever since I saw it on Instagram, like right when I first started doing plant Instagram. And it was just elusive. It wasn't available in the United States at the time. And the second it was available, I hopped up and got it. And I don't really, I mean, like I get, I get got by plant trends. I absolutely do because this got me, but I don't, I don't always get got by like trendy plants. Like I'm not rushing on the street for variegated Monstera or pink princess philodendron, but this thingy, I was rushing down the street for it. So this was this was the one that got me. So yeah, and I didn't let it get away. So uh, yeah, really incredible plant. It's really done uh, so much for me since I've had it. I, I can't even like show you guys. I had to untangle um, this mess from a whole plant display earlier as I was getting ready to film this video, but it's just got so many runners and tendrils and vines and whatever you want to call them. It has it and it is thriving. So this is one that I should really consider giving it a taller moss pole but I am just obsessed with this wild look. It's like Rapunzel <laughs> letting down her hair. It's just, it's it's so cool. So a really easy plan. It's done nothing but give me love. And of course, you know, it's, it's taken some learning. You can see I've got some brown edges around the side, which is probably from me just getting to know how to water this plant. But this Monstera, I keep right directly underneath a grow light and that seems to be the ticket for this plant. I have another one. Uh, the one that I was rushing down the street for, uh, right next to a western facing window, that one also does fantastic, but this is the one I like a little bit more on the moss pole, so of course I wanted to share it with you guys as I'm talking about my top 10 plants, gotta pick the very best. 
So yeah, that's gonna about do it today for my list for top 10 house plants. This one is in particular for summer in 2020. I know I make these videos periodically. So we're just checking in, you know what I mean? So I would love to hear from you guys what your favorite plants are right now, which ones are standing out to you the most, um, because yeah, I really like to know what's going on in your neck of your indoor plant woods. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.